Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, we're looking at supply shocks now. So we've conquered demand shocks, changes in demand, now we're looking at supply shocks. Very simple, same exact concept. When we see the term positive supply shock, negative supply shock, we're talking about something has happened that increases aggregate supply or increases, or sorry, decreases aggregate supply. So positive, something good has happened. It's going to increase short run aggregate supply. So we'll first start by modeling that. So we're going to make this SRAS1 to now show our difference. Increase, we still shift to the right. And I know that on this one specifically, the SRAS curve, this is the only one I think that can actually give people a little trouble with that. That is an increase. And the reason that I think this sometimes can give people a little bit of trouble is just because it might not look like it because now that second curve is lower than the first one. So people get caught up in an up-down thing. So don't refer to it as shifting up or down is my advice. My advice is to keep it right and left um, as the best way to avoid any confusion. So we see that output has increased with this positive supply shock. And here's the key part. Price level has decreased. So the positive supply shock, we have lower price level, but higher output. Um, so unlike a demand shock, which will cause both price level and output to move together in the same direction, Supply shocks do not do that. They cause price level to go one way, output to go the other way. Um, so in this case, lower price, higher output. This is usually seen as a very positive, a very good outcome for an economy. So what would cause this? We have three main things. Um, a decrease in commodity prices. And what we're talking about, remember, because this is aggregate supply, so it's not for one company. So it could not be something like we have cheaper cotton, so that's going to make... Um, you know, cotton t-shirts cheaper. That's true. That's on supply demand model. This is talking about aggregate supply aggregate demand. So it has to be a commodity with economy-wide significance. So we're really talking about oil and gas for the most part, something like that. So if we have a decrease in commodity prices. Oil prices fall. It makes cheaper transportation. It makes it cheaper to fuel your factories or fuel whatever you need. Um, so that is going to help increase aggregate supply for not just one company, but for most companies throughout an economy. So falling commodity prices shifts the SRAS curve to the right. Falling nominal wages, now they can hire more workers because those workers are cheaper. So that will increase the amount that they can output as will an increase in productivity. So these three things will shift the SRAS curve to the right, leading to higher output and lower prices. On the other hand, a negative supply shock, as the word negative there is indicating to us, it's not a very good thing that's happening here. So let's model it. Um, we have SRAS1. Negative supply shock means that there has been a decrease in aggregate supply. So um, decrease, we shift to the left. So SRAS, shifting left. So we have it right there, it looks something like that. And now you guys might already be sensing why this is such a negative one. So whereas the positive supply shock, we could sometimes say that might be one of the best potential outcomes for an economy, this is probably our worst scenario. Why is it so bad? Well, we just showed what happened to output. Output is falling, so we have decreasing output, so we're producing less as an economy. But we're paying more for it. Aggregate price level is increasing. So we have higher prices combined with less output. And that is not a good combination. So we're producing less stuff. Um, we have higher unemployment. We'll get to that later. Don't worry about that. Just ignore that I said that, in fact. But our prices are going up. There's a term for this. And you want to know this term for sure. That term is stagflation. Stagflation. That is what this is described being in this model, stagflation. So we have kind of two words you can kind of see. Inflation is part of it there, and then we have stagnant. Um, so what this is, the stagnant part refers to growth. Stagnant, in fact, we have falling growth. So stagflation is decreasing economic growth combined with inflation, higher price level. Um, this is a very negative outcome for an economy. And as we'll see in future models and future videos, this is one of the tougher things for um, the government to try to deal with or the Fed to try to deal with. And so we'll get to that later. What would cause this? 
a spike in oil prices, so like an oil shortage or crisis, something like that, cause all those um, prices to go up, has economy-wide significance, it's gonna hurt the amount that everybody's gonna be able to supply. Higher wages, shift the SRAS to the left, because paying more workers can't afford as many workers as the thought, and a decrease in productivity would also cause this. So, this is the basics of a supply shock, positive and negative, so hope this helps. Till next time, this has been a La Money production.